across the Bering Sea. Vessel calling Mayday, vessel calling Mayday. New Year's Eve, the United States Coast Guard alerts the fleet. All vessels in the vicinity are requested to maintain a sharp lookout as soon as possible. There's reports that the Scandi's Rose has gone down and that it's missing. I don't know if they were in their suits. I don't know if they're on board or made it in the water. Uh, we just don't know. Vessel calling Mayday, vessel calling Mayday. The fishing vessel Scandi's Rose issues a distress call. The ship and her crew of seven are sinking. Gary's been up here forever and a day. I've known him for as long as I can remember. At the helm, Bering Sea legend, Captain Gary Cobbin. Right now, it sounds like the Coast Guard's on the way. Thank God for that. 605 miles northeast from Dutch Harbor at the U.S. Coast Guard Base Kodiak. Temperature minus one zero, dew point minus one two six. Did you see that wind suck? Yeah, it's blowing straight at you. A search and rescue team points their MH-60 Jayhawk into a 52-knot headwind toward the Scandies Rose last known position. 170 miles away, east of Sutwick Island. We're just trying our best we can to locate these survivors. We're going to find them. There's always a chance in the next hour or two that they might be able to find the guys. You know, the Coast Guard's got to search through the night. They'll probably search through tomorrow, you know, but uh, if they don't find them in a couple hours, I mean, the odds of them surviving are, are not good. I just, I can't hardly believe that this is how we start our new year. It was just. I saw Gary just, I mean, he was like the last person I talked to in Dutch before we flew home. He was excited. He's, he's got the family stuff too. You know, everyone's always excited to go home for the holidays. Let's just hope that we can bring everybody home. 25 miles east of Sutwick Island, With United States Coast Guard aircraft deployed in the search for the Scandies Rose. One chopper relays the news to base. A rescue is underway. Roger. They're currently hoisting survivors on scene. How many survivors are they hoisting over? And contact from uh, 1-1. Uh, we didn't get a number yet. They were in the middle of operations and we established communication. Uh, we'll call you back when we have that information. Over. Scandies Rose was the only boat I talked to on the radio. We go back a long ways, me and Gary. Pretty much hanging by a thread right now. And that's a total understatement. We're just trying our best we can to locate survivors. We should check full, please. Like it's about an hour and a half. Roger. Okay. On the Coast Guard MH-60 Jayhawk, the search continues for the five men still missing from the Scandies Rose. You see that wind? Yeah, you're directly into it. Ugh. 
facing 52 knot headwinds. Uh, so, question is, I, mean, I think if we stay, I'm just thinking uh, getting stuck up here. The rescue team worries their fuel burn rate is too high. How's everyone feeling? Good. The crew decides to forego the use of heat in the cabin to maximize their time in the air and the chances of finding the five missing men. We're going to continue searching. In Dutch Harbor, on the Wizard. It sounded like they had a bunch of gear on, they had iced up. You know, it's sad to see a boat go down. Definitely, and then you think about, now you're heading out in that. Two crew made it out, but I know that Gary, the skipper, was one of Monty's good friends. But I know it's weighing heavy on him. Very fragile out here. You know why sailors are superstitious? Oceans got a very long history of swallowing things up. The old man and Gary have been struggling. After an exhaustive search, combing 1,400 square miles off Sutwick Island. Well, that was not the news I wanted. Uh, they've called off the search. The Coast Guard saves two lives, but the Scandies Rose, her captain, and four crew are lost. You know, they've been searching for, for, for quite a while. And with these water temperatures and the wind that they had, you know, the conditions, I mean, uh, there's only so much you can do. Um, so there goes five more. This is not our first loss and uh, probably won't be our last. You don't find fishermen like Gary Coleman. Very honest, open book truthful it's unreal we got confirmation they called off the search for any survivors on the scandies gary's gone it's a crazy day nick yeah i guess thankful for what we got bitch and moan about some I guess I got a pretty good, I got family and some pretty good friends. You're one of them, Nick. Thanks for keeping us safe. I love you, man. That's devastating news. So they only found two guys out of the entire crew. Hopefully we find out what the cause was so that we can make sure that none of us get in the same situation they were in, but I lost a good friend today. up. And I'm supposed to be worrying about catching cod. <laughs> 
550 miles northwest. On the Opelio grounds. You know, Gary was a good friend of mine. And it's really been bothering me. The fact that Gary's son was also on there and, and perished. It, it, it's, it's hard to believe. It's heartbreaking. I first met Gary uh, in late 80s, early 90. We were on the beach offloading, and I said, I want to take a hand at the uh, bear eye fishing. But yeah, I don't know where to go. <laughs> and Gary kind of chuckled and Les said, well, why don't you follow me? And so uh, he kind of took me under his wing. And uh, he taught me a lot about patience. He believed in very large pots, a lot of soap, and you know, let the gear do the work, which I believe in now. At the time, that was a hard pill to swallow. And he's like, what are you doing, you knucklehead? You know, you got to let the gear do the work. He was honest, sincere. He was not shy about uh, giving information. He was not shy about being on the radio. He loved to talk. And uh, when I look back, I'm very grateful for that because there was not a lot of guys like that.